Hi everyone, I'm José Valim and welcome to the last day of Livebook's launch week. We want Livebook to be an excellent tool across three areas, code, machine learning, and data. And throughout this week, we talked a lot about code, a lot about machine learning. We even built a chat application using Whisper and deployed that to Hugging Face. But we haven't talked a lot about data. And that's because the journey of Livebook and data is just starting. And that's what we are going to talk about today. When you think about data in Elixir, we want you to think about the Explorer project. The Explorer project is a project for the numerical Elixir organization. And it brings series, one-dimensional data, and data frames, two-dimensional data, right into Elixir. It is implemented on top of the Polars project, which is a Rust library, so it's quite performant, and it's highly inspired by the Deploy R project from the R community, which is quite expressive. So our goal is to bring ideas from both of those communities into Elixir in order to provide a powerful and elegant tool for data processing. Let's get started. So one of the best ways to get started with Explorer is to have some data and some questions that we want to answer with the help of this data. So Michael Espey published this article last year where he has exactly those two ingredients. He has a data set, which in this case is information about the baseball season in Japan. And he wanted to answer which players they were having a lot of uh, first pitch is hit. So in the first pitch, they were hitting the ball and they were getting a home run. So I don't know much about baseball, but I'm hoping that if we have the data, if we can look at the data and with help from uh, Michael's article, we'll be able to answer this question. So let's do this. So uh, Michael was very nice of to publish the data set here, which we have available. So we want to get the raw data set. And we want to load that into Livebook. So I'm going to start a new notebook and I'm going to add our dependencies. So I'm going to use uh, Rec for doing requests and we're going to use Explorer, which is what we're going to use for our data exploration. So I'm going to install those dependencies and as soon as we install those dependencies, we can now start evaluating code. So we want to download the data set. I'm going to use uh, Rec get for that. And if we execute this, we can see that we get a response and we can look at the data. We can already see that it is a tab separated values file. So we can work with that. So I'm going to create a new code cell and I'm going to say, look, uh, we want to use Explorer data frame. And because we are going to be using that all the time and we want to use the macro capabilities that it has, the querying functionality, I'm going to require it, but also give it a short name just to make our life easier. And after we do that, I'm going to say, I want to load the CSV and that's going to be the response body. So if we do this, oops, you can see that the result is wrong. It's trading everything. It's because you're missing the delimiter option. So let's do that. Okay, that's much better. So if we do this, uh, we can see that we have a data frame here. We can see that it has 13,000 rows. It has two, uh, 10 columns. And we can see that we are getting like this, like textual representation of the data frame, right? But now with Livebook 0.9, what we can do is that we can come back here and say, look, I want to add Kino Explorer. And if you remember, Kino is all the abstractions that animate Livebook, that bring Livebook to life. So if I add that dependency and I reconnect, now if I execute this same cell, we can see that we get a proper table that we can visualize and explore. So let's do that. Let's amplify this a little bit. And yeah, we have the player names, uh, we have their teams, the game and the date of the game. That's all pretty good. We have pitch, which I don't know exactly what this is, uh, but we have a pitches thing. And then we're saying, oh, first pitch. We can see here, yeah, this can be one. So we probably want to get all the pitches where the value is one. We have velocity. Uh, we can see there are some news just looking at the summary here and looking at the data. We have the result type and we can see we only have one, it's like one single value which means that everything is hit. So I'm assuming this, this data has been previously future, uh, filtered to only have hits. And we have the results, right? And the results here, 
uh, we need to know what is a home run here. So I would bet it's either on the pitch or on the result. So maybe if we go to the next pages, we can see there is a home run here. So we probably want the results that are home run. All right, so we take a cursor glance at our data and um, Livebook is helping us having like some basic statistics and understand it. So this is pretty good. So the next step after, after we are done with this, I think we are ready to um, like start processing it and start filtering it. So one of the ways that we can do it is that we can access the Explorer documentation, which we've actually put a lot of work and effort to make it really good. Uh, but since we are using Livebook, we can use smart cells. So what we can do here, I can click the smart button and then we have a data transformation smart cell. And it's going to say, hey, we need a variable. We, we need a data frame somewhere to get started. That's easy. Let's just assign this result to a variable. And now if you come here, you can see it already picked it up, right? So this is great. So you can say, look, we want uh, pitches, right? We said we want that to be, to be one. So that's like the first pitch hit, right? That's what we want. We can filter it and we already see that we reduce the size, like we already filtered a bunch of rows. And we want to add another filter here, which we said was the result. And the result is equal home run. And now we can see that we already filter our data quite well. And we want to see the players who had the most like first pitch home run. So we can group by, we can group by the player. And since we are here, let's group by the team. So we keep that information as well. And we want to summarize and we want to summarize using the count of all of the result. Right, so if we do that, we can see that we have a resulting data frame here, and we have the player, the team, and the result count. And if we order these, let's say descending, we get our answers, right? So this is pretty good, right? We're able to start exploring the data, transform it without like writing any Elixir code necessarily. But let's suppose we want to send this data to someone else right and when we want to send the data we don't want to call this like result count right we want to call it like home runs or hr like we want to give this column a better name we don't have a rename operation in here but if we remember about smart cells smart cells at the end of the day they are just code right so we can actually go and see the code so this is a great way to learn how to use Explorer because we can use the UI and then we can actually see, oh, this is how I would write the query myself, right? And it's quite clean. So this is great. So we could actually click here and convert this smart cell into code and then do further manipulations with it. But let's do something different today. We can also say, hey, I want to assign the result of this cell to a variable, right? So I'm going to say uh, grouped. I'm going to give this name. And if we look at the code, we can see the code immediately change, which is pretty neat. So sure, I can uh, execute the cell again. So we have our new variable. And now I can use a regular code cell to finish the operations, right? So I want to get the group with data frame. And now we can play a little bit with the data frame API. So let's say, well, rename, let's give, yeah, we have a rename function. That's pretty good. We can mouse over here and see how it works, see some examples. So. Uh, I can see that I can use this format here to rename. So let's try that. So I want to say a result count and we want to call it, let's call it HR. And yeah, that's pretty good. We're able to rename the column. And since we are here, let's arrange in descending order by our new HR column. So pretty good. And let's say we don't want everything, right? We want like top 10. So we can go export the API. Um, there, is, there is no limit function. So we can play a little bit with the ideas in here and say, oh, had function, that's sounds promising. So let's say had, and we want 10 entries. And yep, that's it. We're able to work with the data. First, we started using the smart cell. Right, and then we're able to take it on our own, do further manipulations to the data frame, to the table, and get the top 10 players. So that was pretty neat. And that's what I wanted to share with you today is the beginning of this journey of live book and data with the help of the Explorer project. And we'll have much more to share in the next launch week. 
All right. Thank you so much for joining us throughout this week. Until next time. Bye.